Capella is the sixth brightest star in the night sky. It forms part of perhaps the most stunning asterism of all, the winter hexagon. But I've never heard of the winter hexagon, you might say. Well, that might be the case, but you'll no doubt have seen it. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video, we return to the beautiful yellow star system that makes up Alpha Aurigae, Capella. So let's get to it. Red supergiant Betelgeuse is used to having its own way. Largest star by volume within 1000 light years, it shines brightly in perhaps the most famous constellation of all Orion, and it's been given the alpha designation despite the fact that it's only the constellation's second brightest star generally. Mentioned as well in many TV series, everybody's first named star even theoretically has a film character franchise named after it, but for once, Betelgeuse is stuck in the middle. Aldebaran, Rigel, Sirius, Procyon Pollux, Castor and Capella are six stars that surround Betelgeuse. They make up this stunning asterism in the winter sky that contains well over a quarter of all the top 20 brightest stars in the night sky. At the very top of this asterism is a yellowish twinkling star that has a Latin name, Capella. Capella, as is often the case for such bright stars, hides from our eyes the real truth that it's actually a star system a multiplicity system if you like, of as many as four stars. So what is the system like? The main pairing are Capella AA and Capella AB, and these consist of two stars that have both exhausted their core hydrogen, cooled and expanded moving off the main sequence. AA has a mass of 2.5 solar masses and a radius of 12, whereas its partner AB is slightly less massive at 2.48 solar masses and again slightly less voluminous at 8.8 .8 solar radii. AA is slightly cooler than AB, which interestingly means it moves into the K-class as opposed to the G-class Capella AB. Capella AB is currently in the Hertzsprung gap, which is a place on the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, which interestingly means that it is in a brief subgiant evolutionary phase before it expands and cools to become a red giant. The pair are joined by a much fainter red dwarf pairing. Thought to be some 10,000 astronomical units away from the main stars, Capella H and Capella L are both faint, small, and relatively cool red dwarfs. Some 210,000 years ago, interestingly, Capella was actually the brightest star in the night sky until some 260,000 years ago when it gave way to Canopus, and then finally to Sirius. At brightest, Capella actually shone at minus 0.8 in apparent magnitude, so it was the brightest star in the sky, but it remains somewhat dimmer than the star of Sirius today. Here we see a list of the historical brightest stars in our skies, and you might also notice that at minus 1.1 apparent magnitude, a fellow member of the winter hexagon, Aldebaran, was indeed the brightest star before Capella got its moment in the limelight. During this time, Aldebaran and Capella were both situated rather close to each other in the sky, and approximated the pole stars at the time, which must have been quite a sight as depicted in this artistic impression. In a previous look at Capella, well over a year ago now, we imagined what would happen if the multiplicity star system were to appear at Neptune's distance. As you can imagine, it wasn't good news for our solar system. So it got me thinking for a new video on Capella. And if we replace the Sun with the Capella stars, just how far away would we have to be for the two major stars of Capella to be our Sun's equal in the sky? Our Sun from planet Earth has an apparent magnitude of minus 26.74. And if the main Capella stars were to replace it, AA would shine at minus 31.59. Now for reference, this is the magnitude of the brightness, as roughly how bright our Sun would be, at approximately three times closer in to Mercury, or just 0.1 astronomical units. In other words, if Capella AA was the centre of our solar system, pretty much everything on Earth would be very, very burnt toast as things stand. Not only this, we also have to bear in mind that its partner is only very, very slightly dimmer, and would shine at almost the same at minus 31.52, so Capella actually would be double the trouble. Indeed, the two stars together would be even more luminous, and my calculation is that the twin pairing would have a combined apparent magnitude of minus 32.29, or double the brightness of each star on its own, which makes sense, doesn't it? So for the double stars to shine as bright as our sun does on Earth, just how far away would we actually have to go? The figures say that both AA and AB would have to be approximately 1,350,000,000 kilometres away, or just over 9 astronomical units, which is approximately the orbit of Saturn if they were individual stars. But they're not, so given that Capella is a binary system, both stars would approximately be double the luminosity, 
And so I estimate, to shine as bright as our sun from Earth, our twin stars would need to be located somewhere around 12 to 13 astronomical units from Earth, or in between the Saturn's and Uranus's orbits. In this graphic we imagine then, the magnificent cliffs of Verona Rupes on Uranus's moon of Miranda, and what might be our view if Capella joined our sun at the centre of the solar system. First, for reference we see our sun, which on an ordinary day in the Uranian system shines at roughly 400 times dimmer than that on Earth at apparent magnitude of minus 20.36. The Verona Rupes cliffs on Miranda are truly one of the solar system's most incredible signs, but they'll get even more incredible, because the next up is the Capella AA star, not quite as bright as the Sun on Earth, but still plenty bright enough to slowly begin the thawing process on Miranda. Indeed, this thawing and sublimation continues, and now we see the Capella AB star as well, again not quite as bright as our Sun from planet Earth, but the Miranda thawing process continues and a fragile water vapour and oxygen atmosphere slowly begins to congregate on the tiny world. Finally, we see all three stars together in the centre of our solar system. The combined warmth of the two Capella stars finally mean that the melting point of water is reached, and although the pressure is so low that the water can only sublimate, we see the process of turning Miranda into a new potentially habitable world begin, alongside, of course, the other beautiful moons of Uranus. Capella holds a special place in Earth's history, and for a time it was the second brightest star we could see after the Sun. In reality though, it is a complicated multiple system of four interlocked stars. As part of the Winter Hexagon, Capella continues to form part of the beautiful patchwork of stars that inspire us, and make us wonder what lies beyond our solar system. Maybe it's sad to think that over the next millennia, Capella will slowly fade away into the distance as it makes its way away from us. Maybe our future ancestors will wonder one day what it's like to experience and wonder to have been able to see Capella so close up. Let's make the most of this beautiful yellow star while we still can. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you'd like to support the channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description below. Thanks to those of you that have already done so. And if you have any videos or subjects that you'd like to see brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments below. It could just be your idea that shows up next week. Take really, really good care of yourselves. Look after your friends and family well, and I'll see you on the next one.